I'm so tired of Cursor apologizing to me for getting something wrong. Also, the best information seems to be at the end consistently, and the, the responses are just way too wordy. I'm tired of it, it's just wasting a lot of our time, so today we're gonna figure out system level prompts. Let's get into it. So here's a good example of stuff that I just prefer not to see. I don't like when it grovels. You're absolutely right, and I apologize for the oversight. Like, don't give a shit. It might feel nice at the beginning of the conversation, but good lord is it exhausting, like, five prompts in. I also don't really care that it affirms me. If it's a good idea, execute it. If it's not, don't. Now, to kick us off with this, I asked Perplexity how to set up system prompt in Cursor. We have a handful of things that we can try. Let's check out these answers. So we can start by opening up Cursor settings and look for rules for AI section. Let's give that a try. Rules. This freaking compose window. Rules for AI. AI, don't think that's right. Rules, nope, bad. Okay, this looks more promising though. Using a cursor rules file, create a file named cursor rules at the root of your repository, paste your system prompt there, perfect. Technically, this doesn't sound like a system prompt. This is like a repo level prompt, which is actually great um, because then it would be shared theoretically. Okay, so we'll paste this in here. Funny that the suggestion here is code, when I think that it's probably a plain text. All right, key points about system prompts. The system prompt is applied to all AI features within cursor, that's what I want. You can have different prompts for different repositories. Yep, assumed. The prompt can be used to set specific instructions, preferences, behaviors for the AI, great. Uh, we have an example here, um, and it looks like Lists is a good way to go about this. Do not give high level shit. If I ask for a fix or explanation, I want actual code or explanation. Amazing. This is by, by a cursor engineer, that's great. This is actually awesome. Be casual unless otherwise specified. Be terse, suggest solutions that I don't think, I didn't think about, anticipate by my needs. Treat me as an expert, be accurate and thorough. Okay, this is great. I'm just, let, let's start with this. I'm a big, 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 big fan of that. Um, I wonder, does this re is this referenced somewhere? Oh yeah, okay, engineer at Cursor shares a system prompt he uses to write. Uh, and then we're lost. Man, fucking paywalls. Okay, so obviously we get a lot of additional suggestions. <laughs> just a wall of please provide code in the language I asked for. Oh, that's sad. Um, great. Let's try this. Now, this is the Nux app that I had started yesterday. And before committing, I did have one question about this API directory on the server side. You can see that by clicking the card right up here. And just to test my assumptions that I could get rid of this, let's open Compose again with our new cursor rules in place and ask it a question. Now, just to be safe, I'm gonna hit Reset Composer so that we don't have anything screwing this up, anything uh, tampering with our results. This should it doesn't feel right to have the sign in endpoint in the slash API directory. Am I able to move it to the root uh, without problem? Now, ultimately, I just want to know that it's safe to throw this directly into the server and they don't need to be in a subdirectory like API. But some additional info that I would be interested in is if it thinks about this link that we've already made. So I have the sign in endpoint as context but I'm hoping that it will suggest that I need to update any URLs, even without the context of the view index file. Sure, you can move the sign in endpoint to the root. Here's how you do it. Move the file, gives me a shell command to run and update the sign in TS file. Now, I don't know, no changes needed in the code itself. The define event handler function works the same way in both locations. Update any references to the, okay, so it did provide this instruction, which I am grateful for. This move shouldn't cause any issues. Nitro Nuxt server engine treats both server API and server routes as valid locations for server routes. Wonderful. So it created for me a server routes file, and I believe I can accept this to create it. It's funny though, because it, it creates it with this comment, like just copy the existing code. Now, something that's a little bit frustrating about this is now I can't run this move command because it's created it for me. So theoretically, I guess I should have rejected it and then run the move command. So I'm gonna delete it now and then um, run this command. 
First, I have to make the directory, and then I think I can run that command. Perfect. Next, we need to find anything that was referring to app API sign in and replace it with sign in. Those all look correct. Let's do that and see what we get. Click our link. And there we go. Okay, so what did we learn? Well, it was actually pretty short and painless. We get a repo level cursor rules file, which seems to take effect. The answer that we got back was very concise and included all the details that I would have hoped for. And now I can commit it to my repository so anyone else on my team that's working in cursor would have the benefit of this repo level system prompt. Easy enough, no point belaboring the point. If you have things that you find particularly valuable in including in your system or repo level prompts, let me know in the comments below. Subscribe, share, like, or don't. I'm fantastic. I'll see you in the next one, bye.